So for guitar, eventually what's going to happen is we'll come back during the guitar authoring um, episode and we'll start cutting between these uh, audio stems as we need to and moving everything that's not playable down here into this section. And then that section will get rendered together with the backing tracks section. Uh, but for now, we just kind of want to get a temporary version of this up and running so we can move it over to the game and, and be able to start testing the parts as we work on them. So for now, I'm just going to solo all the guitar parts together and render those out as the guitar stem, just understanding that by the time we're finished, um, at any given time, only one of these audio streams will be uh, the playable part. Looks like most of the activity, just looking at the wave files here briefly, is on the acoustic. So there's a good chance we'll just be playing Clara's acoustic guitar the whole time. But uh, there's also the possibility that when we get into the louder parts of the song, that the electric might become more interesting, and we'll, we might want to switch over and play part of that as the uh, playable part. So for vocals, we actually want to render all of the vocal layers together. Now we only need um, the first three harmony parts as dry parts. Eventually, if we end up editing between the different harmony parts to create the actual playable harm two and three, those will get cut together um, to create the dry vocal that goes with it. But um, for now, what I'll do is I'll just pick um, the first three and render those out as our dry vocals to be able to load into Magma. Now when we're rendering dry vocals, we actually want to temporarily switch this down to 16 kilohertz mono, and everything else uh, stays the same. Okay, now we'll render the keyboards out, and similar to um, what I was mentioning earlier with the guitar part, eventually we'll just have one playable keyboard stem at any given moment, and everything else will be uh, down here as part of the keyboard tracks area, which will get actually get rendered as part of the backing tracks. So for now, I'm just going to render all the keyboards out together as quote-unquote the keyboard part, knowing that I'm going to come back in here and change that later. So now we're back to a regular um, audio file that we're actually going to hear in the game. So I want to bump that back to 44.1 kilohertz stereo. And then the last piece is this uh, backing track here that includes our count in, the hand clapping, and any other uh, backing track elements that they gave us in the audio stem. Okay, so now that everything is queued for rendering, I just come up here to File, Show Render Queue, and then I can quickly eyeball this and see if it looks like everything I asked for is there. And that's looking good, so then I just click Render All, and then it slowly starts cranking them out. And uh, that'll take a few minutes to get through that many. So I'll go ahead and edit out, and catch back up with you when that's finished.
Okay, so now that everything is rendered, I'll just close the uh, render queue. And then uh, what I want to do is save this version of the Reaper project that we've been working on at, uh, with a different name. I'm going to call this one Heartstrings Mixdown. This was a technique that I learned from the guys at Rhythm Authors. They're another rock band uh, authoring company, and they are awesome. And they did a video series like this uh, last year that really taught me a lot of the material that I'm showing here. Um, and they use this technique where they've got a uh, separate, um, separate project for mixing versus charting. And honestly, uh, I have not really been able to figure out how people do it without doing that. And so maybe everybody uses this approach. I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Um, but so now that we've got a mixing version, uh, then we'll kind of put this away uh, for the time being and just use, um, switch over to what's going to be our charting version, which will just be the name of the song. So with the charting version, there are actually certain things that we don't need in this template that we can get rid of, um, but now that it's all tempo mapped and set up uh, correctly as far as timing, we can just go ahead and pull in the stems that we rendered and uh, start charting away in the future um, segments. So the first thing I'll do is just go through and delete... I'm just going to hold down the control key and select each of the... Uh, WAV files so I can delete them. I'll just hit the delete key on the keyboard. And actually, vocally, I can just get rid of... I can get rid of all of this. Um, same thing with the guitar. I'm only going to need one uh, guitar track. And same thing on the keyboard. I only need one keyboard track. If I right click on them, I can say remove tracks, or you can just hit the delete key on the keyboard. It's the same thing. So some of these tracks, I'm, I'm deleting the track altogether because I know I don't need it when I'm in the charting stage, and then some of them I need the track but I'm going to get rid of the WAV file that's in it and replace it with the version that we just rendered out a few minutes ago. And then here in the track stem, I can get rid of these count-in tracks because the count-in is now rendered as part of the tracks um, stem that we uh, just created. And so that'll, that'll come along in the WAV file that we're going to bring in, in here in just a minute. Now, I don't really need these effects tracks anymore, so I could go through and remove all those. That just adds a step where you have to go back into the routing matrix and fix the, fix the stems so that they're not routed through there anymore, um, because it won't do that automatically. So I just have a tendency to leave them there, but they're not getting used at this stage, just in case, um, in case that's confusing. So I'm just noticing that uh, it looks like when I moved the song forward to the third bar when I was creating my count-in, I accidentally grabbed these three tracks along with all the audio files and moved them as well. Uh, which I should not have done, so I apologize if that was confusing. Um, but that kind of thing happens every now and then, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull these back to the beginning, and then when I get my audio loaded back up, I'll need to fix my events track and my beat track uh, so that they're ending at the proper spot. Um, so th th it's important here in the charting version, over in the mixing version of the Reaper project, um, that won't really matter uh, because it's, that information is not getting used over there. This is, this is where it counts right here. So now I'm ready to import all of the audio stems that we just rendered. And um, the reason we use those versions is because those are the ones that are timed uh, properly to start the song out here and have the count in on the beginning. And then over time, if I go back to those versions and re-render them to make adjustments to the audio, then next time I come in here and open the charting version, it'll automatically uh, pull those changes in and, and it'll get reflected. So it's a really nice technique. Again, that's not my idea. That's something I picked up from uh, the guys at Rhythm Authors, and I, I'm very grateful for that. So I'm going to click the bottommost track here, hit Control t to create an empty spot for them to land, just like we did uh, uh, the first time around. And now I'm just going to go Insert Media File. And now this time I'll go into my Mixed folder and select... Um, the sort of magma ready versions of uh, the stems that are going to get pulled into the charting version of the project. So once that gets done grinding, we'll come back here and now we'll notice that we're able to have everything start right on the first beat because uh, 
the count in is in place down here on the tracks file. Let's just take a quick listen and make sure that uh, it sounds like it's actually working correctly. Okay, so that sounds more or less correct. Um, I'm also noticing that I hate the hi-hat sample that I used for the count-in. So you may notice in future versions of these videos that I've gone back and swapped that sound out with something that's a little less uh, obtrusive. So now all I have to do is just drag these audio files up to the tracks that they actually belong on. So put the kick up here on the kick track. Again, when I do these kind of movements, I like to leave snapping enabled so that they're not kind of sliding around and, and floating out of time with where they're supposed to be. Here's the snare. Here's the rest of the drum kit. Bass guitar. playable guitar part which temporarily contains all of the guitar layers uh, but again this is just sort of a placeholder for now so we can get the song up and running in magma which will happen in our next uh, segment here's the um, oh, these are our dry harmony parts and I keep those muted so that we're not hearing them layered over the top of the actual vocals. They're really only there for reference. Sometimes you want to listen to the dry version if you're having trouble telling when exactly a note ends. If there's like some delay on it or something in the in the version with the effects, it can be tough to tell when the vocalist actually stops singing and things like that. So it's good to have that in there for a reference. Here's the actual vocal track. And similar to the uh, guitar, this has all of the vocal layers in it. Here's the uh, keyboards track, so I'll put that up here in the playable keyboard area. Now the keyboards tracks area, I don't actually need here in the charting version of the project, so I can click the top, um, the top of this uh, collection of tracks and delete that, and that'll take everything that's um, nested underneath it along with it. So I'll get rid of that, and then uh, I'll do the same thing for the guitar. And... And the last thing here is the backing tracks. So I'll move that up here to the tracks area. Then get rid of all my track, uh, empty tracks. And do a quick save. And now we're ready to bounce out the uh, MIDI package that's going to go into Magma. And all you have to do for that is go up to File and say Export Project MIDI. And right now there really is no MIDI to speak of. There's a few placeholder notes on some of these tracks that'll just help it to get past the compiler stage in Magma so we can get the song into the game. Um, and then we have to go through and gradually put in the, the real charting that you'll see over the coming episodes. But you'll notice um, by default it wants to name the, the MIDI package after the, uh, the Reaper project, which is fine. In this case, just make sure it's the name that you want. And then uh, we want to uh, render the entire project and we want it to consolidate all of those different MIDI tracks into one piece, but we want it kept as a multi-track MIDI file, not all merged onto one chart. And then you definitely need the tempo map embedded because, uh, as I mentioned previously, that's sort of the key to the whole thing working correctly from a timing perspective. So then I just click OK, and it does it instantly because it's essentially just text data. And uh, now that MIDI file is ready for us to import into Magma along with our audio files and our metadata and uh, we'll take a look at that in the next segment. So this is, um, for me anyway, the trickiest part and the most sensitive part as far as um, it being really easy to screw up and not realize it. And uh, it's also, for some people, the most boring part because you're not really into the charting stage yet. But if you can get a really good clean setup and a really solid tempo map on your song, then the rest of the process is, is relatively straightforward and a lot of fun to work on. So it's important, even though this is kind of a challenging stage to get through from a learning curve perspective, uh, to really get good at it. And, and uh, I think that'll help you have a good experience on, uh, on working on the rest of your song. Hey baby, it's easy to believe.